All right, welcome to this live stream that I'm going to be uh, doing to just kind of show you guys a behind the scenes of working on my next ebook, which is going to be an artist's x ray vision, the female figure. If you guys are interested, there's already an ebook on the male figure. It's called An Artist's X ray Vision, the Male Figure. And you can find a link to that in the description. It should be the first link. There's also links to my Patreon, which I really appreciate anybody that supports over there, as well as my sculpting courses, uh, the figure sculpting course, and the portrait sculpting course. So basically, I wanted to give you guys a behind the scenes look at uh, the creation of this ebook. I already have several diagrams that I've um, that I've been working on. Uh, I was planning on doing this ebook in the past, but I kind of had other projects that took my attention away from it. But the last YouTube video that I did um, on an artist's X revision, the male figure, I was talking about uh, uh, what was the title of the video? Like five visual hacks for artists that you can't unsee. And I asked in that video if people would be interested in an ebook on the female figure, and it seemed like people were really interested in that. And so um, I'm working on that right now. Here you can see a couple of the visuals that are already uh, in the works and will be part of that upcoming ebook. Um, and in this video, I'm hoping to just kind of show you guys behind the scenes of me creating those visuals and the tools that I use and the things that I'm thinking about as I'm uh, as I'm uh, trying to communicate how an artist's how an artist goes about seeing the figure and understanding the the information the visual information that's coming in from a sculptor's perspective and from somebody that's really interested and loves figurative art so let's go ahead and get into it so these are just images that I'm saving and then I'll put it into a PDF book later. But right now they're just images and I'm using Adobe Fresco. Uh, you can use, like you could use Procreate or there's also this uh, painter, I think it's called app with a little paintbrush. Um, but I just started the other ebook in Adobe Fresco and it's worked so far. This is an older version, I'm not even sure if it's still available. And so that's the, this is the software where I'll be drawing on the picture and doing all of that is in Adobe Fresco. Um, and then the images, most of the images for this ebook, the original ebook on the male figure was done with references of myself. I just took references of myself, of um, different uh, parts of the body, non-nude. So uh, I'm not that adventurous, uh, but just, just to... Uh, show the male figure and because I didn't have you know I couldn't hire a model didn't have the budget for that so I just used myself as a reference for that first ebook but on this one um, I found that there's quite a few websites and one of my favorites is uh, Pexels P-E-X-E-L-S uh, dot com and they just have a bunch of um, free references that are uh, that are free to use so people put them up there with the understanding that artists and uh, videographers and YouTubers and other people are going to use those visuals uh, in their in their work, and so um, I actually like that that visual of the portrait. Maybe that's one that we'll work on. We'll see if I get to that. You have the option to donate, which is always uh, great uh, to support those that are you know, taking their time to put up the visuals for all of these, uh, all of this free content that they have at Pexels. Another one is Pixabay is another uh, source, but I think Pexels also includes some um, uh, images and videos from Pixabay. Uh, but those are a couple of websites that where you can get free images. And those are the uh, resources that I'll be using for this ebook. Let's go ahead and go into this and we will get an image, um, get an image to work on. So let's see, I think I wanted to work on some of the, uh, some of the concepts of the, the hand. So let's go ahead and choose a picture of a hand. I like this one and this one's nice because it kind of contrasts the male 
you know, the male hand versus the female hand. Let's get that, get that about aligned. And then I'll get that layer going. And then each color I try to do on a new layer just so I don't get mixed up. Let's see, we do have a comment. Uh, somebody saying, hi, I'm from, I'm a beginner from uh, Puerto Rico. I'm very grateful for your tips. Please talk something about finishing techniques, how to soften the uh, plast, uh, castellane or plastiline. Thanks. So um, that's something. Uh, there's actually a video, if you're interested in that topic, there's a video on the Proco, um, on the Proco 3D YouTube channel that goes over um, that goes over texturing and details of the portrait. I can't remember the title of the video, but if but it's part of the figure sculpting fundamentals course. And so if you're interested in texturing, then I would go check out that video. And that should be a helpful resource. Um, if you're if you want to do that. So let's go ahead and get some of the colors uh, for this. I like to use just these uh, these sliders. Let's see. I don't want RGB. I want the these ones. And I just get um, you know red, yellow, and then I'll get you know this. What is that? Indigo or kind of purple color, blue, and turquoise. And these are the colors that I try to use. Oh, and green. And these are the colors that I try to use um, just to differentiate different colors and because it's pretty simple and straightforward. And let's start with the green, which is the one that I like to use for, oh, let's get rid of that one. Okay, let's start with the green. Oh, oops. And I like to use the green for gesture. And let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit more so you guys can see uh, up close kind of what I'm what I'm doing, what I'm thinking about. So the first, the the green lines, the lines that I want to be thinking about are the gesture from and this is something that I talked about in the in the recent video, uh, the visual ha hacks that you can't unsee, was the principle of grouping the hand or seeing the gesture of the hand as a flow that follows from the wrist down to the three fingers, the middle three fingers of the hand. And I call this middle's pinky thumb. So you see the thumb and the pinky as separate entities and the main gesture of the hand as this this kind of flowing gesture that flows through the wrist to the tips of the fingers. The reason that this is really helpful is that this gesture is just easier to follow than trying to, um, you know, uh, trying to understand the hand overall. I find that the, from many angles, the gesture just flows naturally into these three fingers. And so for the first, you know, uh, for the first gesture of the drawing, that's probably the the flow that I want to focus on. And then as a separate second part, oh, whoops, this one's a little bit off. As a second thing, let's do this one in, in yellow. Then we think about the gesture of the thumb. So it's going to kind of come through like that. And the pinky as its own gesture and we could even you know give a, a second gestural line for those and then you can see that just with that little bit of information I don't know if that's very easy to see on there but just with that little bit of information you kind of get a sense of what's happening with the hand let's also with that yellow let's just give a, or maybe maybe with uh, yeah, let's do a yellow, but I'll do it on another on another layer in case I don't like it. Just think about the tips of the fingers and where those where those are located. 
the tips of the fingers. Actually, let's do, these are, these are still the rhythms of the hand. So yeah, let's do that. The second knuckles, the third knuckles, and the wrist. And these rhythms, these curved lines are really helpful to look for um, regardless of what you're, whether you're drawing, painting, or sculpting, looking for these curved rhythms that connect parts of the features is really helpful. So let's see. Yeah, I think, I think that's, that's helpful. All right, so let's do another layer. And on this one, let's think a little bit about the bone structure. Now, the purpose of this ebook is not to be a anatomy like reference book. That's not what I'm thinking about when I do this. If I was going to do that, then I'd go through and, you know, I'd label all of the muscles and all of the bones and and everything like that. But what I'm trying to do is just trying to get you to think about uh, these different elements. And so bones are one element, especially of the hands. The hands are very bony. So I like to use this turquoise color for the bone structure. So let's go ahead and we're just going to um, just give kind of a circle shape just to indicate that there's a lot of bones in these areas. And then I'm going to say that this is the bottom of the ulna. But I'm not going to do much more than that. There's the bottom of the ulna. It's going this way. And then we could also say, well, the, the radius is also a big part of the wrist. And it's a thicker part of the wrist. And it's going back that way. And as far as for this ebook, uh, that's enough information. And there's, you know, there's a lot of bones in this wrist area that makes all the magic happen of being able to maneuver the wrist. But for now, I'm just saying, you know, there's, there's this form there. And then... I'm just going to come out and kind of give an indication of those those bones of the of the fingers starting and coming out. I'm trying to imagine what they're looking like underneath the the surface cuz you can't see them. Something like that. The thumb also has one that's a little bit thicker. It's going to come something like that. So I'm not, uh, you know, that they are more complicated than this, but simplicity is helpful. And so let's go ahead and finish out the thumb with another, so kind of a, another bone shaped something like that. It's kind of wider at the base and then thinner up here where it articulates with the next. Oops, with the next uh, the next joint, and then the tip is even more. It's like something like this, and kind of that shape, where there's a little bit of a, a bump at the tip of the thumb, and I'm just going to give a little bit of an indication of that. And let's keep going with these. Let's see. Whoops. And if anybody has uh, questions or comments, or if you haven't, um, if you haven't checked out the version of the ebook on the male figure, then I encourage you to do that. That's really helpful. Anybody that gets that, it's under ten dollars, and it's just a, well, it's just about ten dollars, and it's a series of images similar to this that just uh, try to communicate how artists see the figure. There we go on these. I'm giving a little bit of maybe more space than is actually between them. On uh, on babies, there's a lot of space. If you look at an x-ray of a baby's hand, there's actually a lot of space between the bones of the joints. So their hands are very soft and malleable. But then as you grow, those joints become more 
closed. Let's see. that kind of a little bump at the end these are maybe a little bit thick there we go something like that and so even though so this is simplified when you go through and add in that that information, that visual information of the bones, um, I just feel like after I've done that, I just have a, a much better understanding of what's happening with the hand. And uh, so that's looking pretty good. Let's let's see anything. Oh, let's also do the halves method. So. For this one, let's do a new layer. And we'll do red for this one. And so I'm just going to kind of draw a line right here to say, you know, this is the distance between the, the where the wrist begins and the tip of the middle finger. Then if we cut that in half, that's where the first knuckle is. Actually, let's do that a little bit. That starts a little bit lower down. Oops. I'm going to hold it down so that that's a little bit more straight, even though it's not exactly straight. And then cut that in half. And that's about where that first joint is. Cut that in half again, and that's where the next joint is. Cut that one in half, that's where the last joint is, and cut that in half, and that's where the fingernail is. And so that's a really quick uh, visual to get an idea of where the, uh, where the joints are located on the hand. And I found that to be really helpful, and I'm not, not a lot of people um, understand that because the hands are difficult and so this is just one thing where if you can remember okay about half of the length of the hand is where that first knuckle is then cut that in half again half again half again to find the next knuckle the next knuckle and the fingernail so let's see I think I think that's about good for this visual I like the the information that I'm seeing. Let's see, I can do one more thing. So let's change the yellow of this one to blue. And I'm going to just change those just so that we have different colors. So the, the yellow will be the secondary forms of the pinky and thumb, the middles of the middle's pinky thumb. The green is the primary gesture of the hand from the wrist and forearm down to the tips of the fingers. The blue is then the rhythms that connect the knuckles and the wrist, kind of rhythms to look for connecting everything. The turquoise is the bones of the hand and the red is the halves method, cutting the hand in half to find the location of, the, of those knuckles and that's pretty close to accurate for this um, for this sculpture so I think that's good so let's go ahead and take some take some images so I like to save this one quick export just save image and then I so I save it without the reference image behind and then with the reference image behind and then I turn off all except for one and then save that image so each uh, so each picture in the ebook let me actually show you guys well I'll finish this and then I'll show you guys uh, how I like why I like to save each of these as separate images 
save image, and then this one. And this, let's see, this last one, I might like to have both of these gestures in place as one image, because I don't think they conflict. They're both kind of gesture, but I'll turn that one off just in case and save that image as well. Okay, and then I've got all of those images, then let's turn all these back on. And then let me show you kind of what, um, what those what those look like in the the male version and that's what I'm basing this one off of so on with each image let's go down to with each with each uh, principle there's the first image and then and then the that first image with all of the diagrams drawn on top and then all of the diagrams without the underlying image, and then in, a, in smaller sections, all of those diagrams individually. So I basically, each, each image is broken up in several different ways with, with different images, and that's just how I, I've done it. And people have mentioned that they liked being able to see like the reference image without any diagrams, and then all of the diagrams on top. And then they can kind of see how I came to understand the, the pose from the original pose. So that's just uh, why I save all of those as separate layers. Let's see, we got another comment saying, I sculpted a hand lately, never satisfied with my fingertips. It's all about the, um, is it about fat pad or nail? So the fingertips are tricky um it is it is uh a lot of it has to do with the taper of the finger itself let's see if i can let's go to a different image so let's go ahead and we're going to save that one and we'll do a new let's do a new document just with the white background the male figure i had a black background but with the female figure i want to white background, so kind of the yin-yang type of deal. Let's get another image in place, and I'll see if I can um, see if I can address those fingertips a little bit better. And, I, and plus, I need more um, of the references of the hands. Let's see if there's any that where the fingertips look Um, well, this one looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and do this one now. Let me make that larger. Let's see. Move it over just a little bit. Okay, so um, yeah, the fingertips. The fingertips are difficult, so let's go ahead and do this one. We're gonna work on this hand, and let's start with the, with the fingertips. Usually I do the gesture first and other things, but let's do the finger fingertips first because that's what we were, we're thinking about. Let me just get set up. It just takes a sec. Please close. Okay, and let's start with the... Uh, with this purple, or this, uh, what is this, purple? Is that purple or indigo, maybe? I don't know. But let's go ahead and look at the, at the fingertips, and as well as the thumb. So like I... Like I mentioned with the other one, actually, let's do the, the bones first. So I'm just going to 
give a quick indication of these the bones of the fingertips. Oh, whoops, this is. And there actually is kind of this little bump. Let me try that again. There's like a little bump with the bone of the fingertip. There's a little bump at the tip. Um, don't take that out of context. A uh, little bump, and then it kind of widens at the base. And this is important because it actually does change the shape of the of the fingers themselves. Let's see, those might be those are a little bit thick for the bones, but that's that's okay. Let's go ahead and er, go ahead and do the purple. So you see with the with the tip, it is pretty it's pretty rounded at the top, but there's this little, there's a little, um, let's see, there's like a little form. Why is this not? Oh, there we go. There's a little form right here where you can see that there's a, there's a shadow where it comes and it's rounded and then it comes out and actually dips back in before this area down here. So these are actually two separate forms that are um, that are important to distinguish when you're sculpting the finger. So here you can see it again. There's like this little bump and it comes back and then there's these these other forms underneath. So there it is again, a little bump, tip of the finger, and then separate from that, there are, there's like this other form that kind of fits in to that tip of the finger. And I think this is uh, a helpful visual to for people to have. So I'm glad you brought that up because the, the hands are tricky. There's so much to that goes into understanding the hands, but this is a uh, a visual that I think will be helpful for a lot of people in the course. And then the same thing with the thumb. There's like this rounded tip, and then it kind of comes out. And underneath that, there's a separate form that has like these, like these two pillows, these two masses underneath. So I'm kind of just indicating that with a, a squiggly line because they're not really separate. I mean, the finger's very soft, but there is kind of a, a distinction between these two forms at the tip of the finger. Let's keep going down the hand with these. And then there's just, you know, a soft fat pad, you know, these soft fat pads that are connecting everything. The other, the below the tips of the fingers is a little bit simpler. with these fat pads underneath the, the knuckles. And then there's wrinkles that separate those. So I'm trying not to, or to show that these fat pads don't continue to the wrinkles. And here you can see that this, this fat pad is kind of broken again into, into two forms. And really interesting, really interesting fat pads that the fingers have. So if you can understand the 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 bones of the hand, the the hand is primarily made up of bone. So if you can understand those bones, and then the fat pads, then you're you pretty much understand the hand because the bones. Part of understanding the bones is the proportions, which you know are difficult. We all struggle with. Um, and so understanding that is really important. So here, let's, let's go ahead and give an indication of the thenar eminence, which is this big muscle, the thick muscle. It's kind of a drumstick-shaped muscle on the, 
at the base of the thumb, the thenar eminence, and then also a large muscle mass for the pinky, on the pinky side. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And then there's also, actually let's do, let's separate that into two forms. So one that's this way, and then this kind of group of fat pads right there. Just because I think that's a little bit easier for people to understand. And um, after the after this live stream, I'll try to put this up. I'll either put it up as a live stream on YouTube or as an exclusive Patreon uh, video lesson. And in the Patreon, if I do put it up on Patreon, then the I'm filming this as well. And so sometimes the you're able to see a little bit better with um, when I record it than with the live stream. The live stream kind of cuts out some of the visual information. So. If you're interested, uh, I'd really appreciate the support over on Patreon. But let's keep going. So that's that's pretty good. Let's come back to the bones and see if we can uh, give uh, an indication of where those are. And let's see. So let's start with the. Oh, whoops! That's the wrong color. Start with that kind of oval shape just to say, you know, there's a lot of bones in this area, but I'm simplifying things. On the thumb side, well, let's actually, let's, let's actually uh, kind of leave. Kind of leave some so that I can do the bones on the back of this hand afterwards. Okay, and then we want to give an indication of these. Kind of this figure eight shape, and then the, the last one has that bump at the top, and then that figure eight. And then it's kind of pointed, a little bit pointed at the top. These bones, ah, maybe that's too thick. Let me see what it looks like without the... Well, I'm going to leave it. It's okay. It's maybe a little bit too thick, but but that's okay. And this one comes down. And something that is important is realizing that the joints that the joint of this back knuckle is actually taking place around where the pad of the hand is. So around this padded hand area is where that knuckle is. And the webbing of the finger is angled forward. So there's a, there's a tilt to it. It's angled forward. And from the back, when you're looking at it, the webbing is actually about halfway bef between this first knuckle and the second knuckle, about half, halfway. So you can get confused and think, oh, this bone is maybe from here to here, but it's actually from here all the way down here. And so that's another, uh, another important thing to keep in mind when you're thinking about the bones of the hand. So let's keep going. So for this one, same thing. The bone probably starts somewhere down there and something like that. Same thing over here. Boom. And same thing right here. Okay. Let me go on there. And then these are coming towards the the middle area and okay something like that 
That's looking pretty good, I think. Let's go ahead and do the bones on the back of the hand as well. While we can see it. So I'm gonna choose some of the ones that that are standing out where it's a little bit easier to see where they are on the surface. And then I'll kind of deduce from that where the next ones are. This one's kind of tucked a little bit behind. Okay. And these, these lines are not the bones, those are the tendons on the back of the hand. So the bones actually are a little bit more spread out than those tendons are. So let's just do something like that. And tuck that behind a little bit looks like we might be you know because the hand is turning it's very curved there's a lot of curve to the back of the hand and so I want to give an indication of that as well um, let's do that kind of oval to say there's a lot happening there but I'm not worried about it it doesn't add a lot of visual information on the surface and so I can just kind of uh, go to the next next thing and then this, let's see, so this one, we are kind of losing some of the, the knuckle behind, and same thing with there. You know, it's, it's moving forward in space, and so you're losing a lot of, or it's, it's uh, tucked behind the bone that's more in front. Let's see, let's do, I'll keep them separated. Again, there's probably not this much separation between the bones, but we'll just say that that's about what's happening. And with regard to the question on the hands, whether it's the fingernail, I think rarely, if the hands look off, rarely is it just the fingernail that's off. Usually there's, there's some other issues that are usually the shape and taper of the tip of the finger is what's a, a bigger issue. Let's see this one. Let's kind of tuck that behind and tuck this one behind as well. So, yeah, that's looking pretty good. There's also, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add another, I guess I could have done those bones on another layer. But let's do another layer, and on this layer, I'm gonna go back to the turquoise, or not turquoise, but this um, purplish color. And there's actually a, and I'll go through and indicate some of the muscles and fat pads in this area. So there's a muscle, a teardrop shaped muscle right there on the back of the hand. This teardrop shape is pretty prominent on me. You can really see that teardrop muscle right there on the back of the hand. So the three that you need to know about is this teardrop on the back of the hand, the thenar eminence of the thumb, and then this muscle mass of the pinky. And if you, if you understand those and are, are looking for those, then uh, you're you're pretty well off. Let's see. So now, and then there's also some muscles in between the in between the bones of the hand. Here you can see that there's kind of this soft soft squishy area. There are some muscles in between there. So I'm just going to oops. I'm just going to give just a little bit of an indication of those kind of muscle masses. They're not that, let's do a little bit smaller. There's something like that. They just kind of go between those tendons and give a little bit of softness between those. 
but it's not that much. And the tendons are more, you know, more prominent. And actually, let's uh, let's go through and give an indication of those tendons. But I think that's that's good for the for the um, the the purple I use I try to use for the secondary forms so the or the surface forms on top of the sculpture so let's do another layer and on this layer let's do uh, let's do yellow uh, let's see we have red yellow or maybe let's get green and blue so actually, first, let's do the gesture, because that's one that I try to do early on because of how important it is. Just like you would in a drawing or in a sculpture or in a painting, you want to get the gesture um, f first. Let's see. So um, somebody's asking, so fat pads mostly appear on the forehand and bone and tendon on the backhand. Yeah, that's, that's one way of looking at it you know there's a lot of um like this there's a lot of bone and flat if you just feel the back of your hand it's very flat and bony and then on the other side it's very squishy and round pillowy so if you can get the roundness if you can get the shape of this roundness of the tip and the taper as it moves towards the hand as it moves towards the palm if you can get those right from this side view and then also from the this side view, so the profile from this angle, profile from this angle. If you can get those right, then your fingers will already be looking a lot better. I'm I'm sure that'll solve most of the issues that you have. Um, and then and then realizing, yeah, that that one side is very bony, hard, and straight, with a lot of straights and a lot of um, uh, angles. And then the other side is very squishy, soft, and rounded. Let's see, I was going to do, oh yeah, some gesture. So let's go ahead and follow the gesture with the, let's turn these off. They're kind of distracting. So let's follow the gesture with the middle's pinky thumb, just like we did with the other one. So we're going to go right here. Oh, whoops, right here. So that gesture flows through right there. The middle's pinky thumb gesture really strong there and then even on this one you know on this one they also come up the middle's pinky thumb and follows it down actually let's just do just kind of a line there and a line there and if it doesn't end where i want then i'll just redo it quickly and we could say you know i'll put a little little indication of the end of that gesture just a little separate line just to say this is where the gesture ends let's see what that looks like without the without the photo reference and with it Yes, that's looking pretty good. And then for the middle's pinky thumb, what did I do on the last on the last image with the hands? I did the middle's pinky thumb as yellow. So I guess let's do that. Let's do that again. So let's use yellow again for the thumb and pinky just kind of a general gesture something like that and the pinky let's try that again something like that so we're thinking of the thumb and the pinky as their own separate entities the 
this one kind of just wraps around behind. Then let's see if we turn off the reference image. Then yeah, just with those gestures, just with those gestures, I don't know if it's as easy to see on the on the camera. It's because that yellow is not very dark. But here you can see it pretty clearly. But just with those gestures um, really helps to understand what's happening with the hand even before you get into the details if you get the shape of that gesture and everything right. Let's see, somebody's saying, have you tried Nomad Sculpt for iPad or iPhone? It's really amazing, only $15. I have not tried that. I haven't gotten super into digital sculpting yet, uh, though that's something that I might uh, do in the future, especially I just... Um, I just did, using traditional methods, I did a chess board um, recently, and I was thinking, oh, this would be so much easier if, I, if it was just a 3D file I could send off and have somebody else do all the printing and everything. I don't know if that would be cheaper, but doing it traditionally with, you know, sculpting it in clay and then casting it and the molds, I was using like a cheap silicone, so the molds wear out pretty quick, and, and so it's just a big process and a lot more difficult than I was thinking originally. So it would be cool to get into the 3D stuff where you know you could send it off to be printed and, and other things. So actually, I think this is enough. I try not to do too many, uh, too many diagrams on any one image because then it takes up like four, you know, it takes up three or four pages of the ebook. And I like to have lots of different visuals and, and things. So I think for this one, that's good. So let's go ahead and we will export these, save the image, turn off the background image, and export the all the other ones, or all the diagrams together. And then let's turn these all off. Except for one, and then save them one at a time. Bones. The primary gesture. And the secondary gesture. And then, and then with these, I like to save the the green and the primary and secondary gestures together because they kind of go together even though with the different colors they're they're, they're different um, different concepts so i will have to look into that what is that nomad sculpt um it sounds it sounds fun and uh yeah it might be might be something i'd i'd like to try Okay, let's go ahead and see how many we have for right now. So I think for the hands, hands, this is hands and arms. I think for the hands we wanted five. So how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five. So let's go and see if we can do some with the arms. Um, let's do a new... I've tried to create different folders for each thing, but then I have so many folders. Let's see. Hands. So hands and arms. Let's look at one that has more of the arms in place. Um, okay, let's do this one. Just like this lady uh, exercising. So I think this, let's see, we'll have a little bit of white on the edge because I don't want to crop it too much. So I think that is fine. And let's go ahead and, 
And this one's fun because we'll use some of those secondary forms to show the, the muscles. And so let's go ahead and make some layers and get our colors going. I guess there's probably, there's a way to do like the, the preset so you always have the same colors already set up. Um, I'm sure there's a way to do that, but I don't know what it is. So I'm just going to Oh, what did I do? Oh, there we go. Then get some yellow. Okay. Let's start with uh, gesture. Not to start. This one we can do a gesture through the the midsection of the or the middle of the arm, just kind of going down. Let's see. Sometimes changing the angle helps to get that gesture a little bit more. So that gesture is kind of going through the arm. Um, yeah, I think that's that's a pretty pretty close estimation of the gesture. Um, let's say somebody's let's see, uh, Randy Ransons asking, could you pl could you place this streamlined? approach into a perspective link up. Um, I don't know what that is. So maybe if you could uh, explain a little bit more about that perspective link up. Is that a like a website? I assume or something, man. Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not super versed in in uh, technologies and other things. Okay, let's get this going. Uh, so let's do some of these, this anatomy. So I like to use this one for anatomy just because, just because instead of looking at it as, oh, there's like this muscle that goes from this point to this point, I'm just thinking about, okay, on the surface, what's happening on the surface. And so I'm just gonna do do that. So I'm seeing that there's this that there's this form of the shoulder that comes, wraps around, and tucks like comes from behind and then kind of tucks in over here. I I could have included this form, but I think that feels like a separate form. This is one of the you know one of the the uh, posterior head of the deltoid, the shoulder muscle. And sometimes, you know, if, if you're sculpting a bodybuilder, there's like actual differentiation between the three heads, you know, the, the posterior, anterior, and uh, lateral heads of the deltoid. But for, for this, you know, for, for drawing, and especially on a female figure, you rarely see that. And so we're really just trying to get an understanding of what's happening with the reference images with the reference image that we're looking at. So then there's the tricep, which is kind of this form right there. Let's actually do a uh, so let's actually do the tendon first. So there's kind of this flat flat rounded tendon and then this kind of tucks back, comes out and then moves around something like that for the tricep. And then in the forearm, there's this, there's this oh, muscles of the forearm that start here and then they, they move over to the, to the forearm. And then these are like separate muscle groups. But I'm just trying to think of them as individual uh, masses on the 
on the surface. Let's get the bicep. Up. And it comes down something like that. And then, so there's this group. There's also this, this little muscle that's kind of a triangular shape over here. You can't see it because it's mostly in shadow, but I see an indication of that. And then behind, back behind this muscle right here, there's a, a bigger flat muscle. And then separating these is the ulna that's coming towards the back. Actually, let me see. Is that the ulna's coming? I'll put tension back there. Uh, yeah, that was about that's about right. Something like that. Let's see somebody saying, uh, see you doing handcraft uh, sculpture. Just curious, have you tried 3D modeling or 3D printing? Um, I've only dabbled in it very, uh, very little. I haven't done a lot of that. Ooh, let's see. Um, I, prefer, I prefer traditional. I like working in clay and, and using my hands. I feel that, you know, sculpting on a screen is not as, doesn't, it doesn't feel like I'm participating in the tradition of sculpture as much as when I'm actually uh, forming clay with my hands. It's more tactile, and, and I find it more interesting. But uh, but I don't know. Maybe, you know, when I – if I get into it, maybe I'd really like working in 3D. And obviously the 3D printing has some advantages to it as well. Let's see, somebody's saying the figure is composed in space, all perspective, all perspective. Does it express the body form in space, which includes size and position and proportion of which gesture is implanted as background holding action? Um, no, yes, I don't know. It's classified. Um, I'm not, let's see. I'm not sure what was trying to be, what was communicated with that last comment. Let's see, maybe I'm just getting tired. My brain starts to, um, starts to get tired after a little while of doing live stream. All perspective does express the body form in space, which includes size and proportion size and position and proportion of which gesture is implanted as background holding action. Well, I think basically what you're saying is just that the the gesture is what holds the elements together. And to that, I say, yeah, yeah, yes. So the answer is yes. Um, uh, somebody's asking what software am I using? This is um, Fresco, Adobe Fresco, which when I got it, it was it was like a free a free app. I don't know if it's still free, uh, a free version of the app. Um, I use, I don't use a lot of Adobe, uh, products just cause they're so expensive. But for this, I did use Adobe Fresco. Let's see. I'm trying to see. Um, but really you could do this in, in whatever, in procreate or whatever app you prefer. All right, so we've got some of those secondary forms. Let's see if we can figure out what's happening with the, the bones. Though it would probably help. Let me see if I can. I'm actually going to use the, let's see, where is it? Skelly that uh, was created by by Proko, Stan Prokopenko. And let's just kind of get a similar similar pose. Let's see, the arm's kind of coming down. I think it's, if I remember, this isn't going to be exact, but it'll just allow me to get some of the, some of the anatomy 
and then the arms kind of coming forward over the body. And so what are we what are we looking at? But then the hand was turned, wasn't it? Because I was seeing the ulna, hands turned down. Let's see. Yeah, the hands turned down. So the radius, the radius is flipped towards that thumb side and the ulna is over here. So those are kind of crisscrossed over on top. Um, so what he's saying, uh, you're classified talented too. Well, th thank you. Appreciate that. Photoshop is great to use. I'll try Fresco. Yeah, uh, I mean, whatever you have, and if you have uh, uh, whatever you software you're familiar with, I think is what works best. Um, I also really like this, uh, what is this one? This Painter app with this little, I think it's just called Painter with this little paintbrush. I think it was like $10. And I like that. I also, you know, Procreate is a really popular one. So you could really do this in any of them. And you could make your own ebook with these drawings and have your own diagrams and all of that. And I think that would be uh, that would be helpful because I learn a lot as I do these things and try to understand the figure. So let's let's see. Can I actually can I do this? Oh, it won't let me. Sometimes they let you like split the screen between two, but. This one is not supported to do that. So let's just try to understand what's happening as best we can. Well, we're not going to go too complex. So let's just kind of un try to understand it where the where the uh, humerus is. It's kind of up there, and then it comes down here. It's more bulgy on the top, and then it kind of comes down. Something like that. And then the radius starts on, on this side and then flips over and the ulnus back behind there. So let's be sure to try to get that. So we got the radius starts small, comes gets wider. Ooh, let's try it again. So it comes, and then it gets wider towards, let's actually start over here. These are kind of tricky, especially when it's a little bit more spread out to get that gesture. And there's like a little bit smaller and it gets wider at the wrist. And then the ulna is over here. And it's going back here and it gets wider towards the towards the uh, towards the towards the elbow. Let me see if I can see that. Let's turn it off. And then yeah, so the the almost back behind there. Let me Show that by erasing. Oh, I should have done these on different layers. Let's try. Let's try that actually. So let's just redo this really quick. So this one. here comes and then it gets wider over here and 
is then, let's do this one. So this one starts wider. It gets narrower. Just a little bump there. Something like that. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. And then when we have it on separate layers, then it makes it a little bit easier to erase the underlying forms. Let's see. There we go. Okay, that's a little bit better. Somebody's saying this is great material that you're sharing. Thanks. Well, you're welcome. I hope you'll consider getting the the full ebook with all of these illustrations that I'm doing, and uh, and I hope you consider getting the one that's already out, the mail, an artist's X-ray vision, the mail figure, which is the first link in this video. And uh, this one will be coming out hopefully soon within the next couple weeks. I'm trying to finish it up. But I appreciate that. And I uh, hope that people that get it will find it valuable because that is the, that is the goal. Uh, let's see. What is this? I'm going to redo this one. We'll just do another, another layer. And we will... So this one is like a, a ball up top. And then it, I think it's like something like that. It kind of widens out. Something like that. There's like some, some gesture to it and it gets wider where these attach to it. It's not exactly uh, perfect, but and then there's a little bit of a, a bump from the shoulder blade over here, and then also um, even over here with the coracoid process, I think it's called, or something like that. But I'm not too worried about that. Again, this isn't supposed to be like an anatomical uh, reference, like as accurate as an x-ray machine. It's just saying like, okay, I know that the bones are somewhere in this area, um, but I especially want to pay attention to where they, where they change the surface. Those are the really important areas. So right here, the primary, you know, in the shoulder, the primary forms are going to be the, the muscles that are shaping that area. But in areas like the elbow, like the wrist and the fingers, that's where the bones become more important. Um, let's see, somebody saying Humble Bundle has Paint Storm Studio and a painting app that came out recently for $25, I think. I actually used the Painter app you mentioned for the iPad, Infinite Painter is what that one's called, uh, Infinite Painter. Aside from Art Studio Pro and Procreate, um, somebody saying the circle is in the middle. I don't know uh, what that, which which circle. Oh, maybe he's saying the this little circle for the core cord process. Let's see. Let me see what I was thinking. So I'm just thinking of this this bump, I guess, right here, or this bump right here. So there you can see that, that one that I was mentioning, and there's that one right there. So, I don't know. Maybe that's not, uh, I guess the, I could give an indication of where the clavicle is coming. So, oh, oops. Let's do that for this. So the clavicle, and because you can see the clavicle in this reference images, let's do that instead. So the clavicle comes, and then you can actually see it over there. That comes and attaches over here. 
And let's get more of a gesture to that. That's more interesting. Something like that with the clavicle and this one also coming back around. Something like that. Um, with this one, maybe let's do another layer and I'll just do a rough egg, egg shape for the, uh, and I'll see how that looks if I do an egg. Nah, no, let's just leave those. I was going to do the rib cage, but I feel like with the, this one's mostly focused on the arm and I don't want to, uh, have too many lines kind of distracting from that. Maybe I will say that there is something going on with the shoulder back here. I think that would be helpful. So there is this shoulder blade, you know, a little bit of it. It's pushing out, and this is a muscular uh, model. So you can't see that as much, but you do see a little bit of the muscle coming back. And so I'll just say, like, oh, their, their shoulder blade is kind of coming back this area behind here somewhere back there the shoulder blade but that's uh, you know that's about as detailed as I'm going to get let's go ahead and just say that there's stuff happening here by drawing a little a little oval there are bones in there and then the other the bones of the hand are coming off here but again, nothing too detailed, just saying, oh, there's bones here. And I think that will be good for that. Let's see, what, how many colors do I have? One, two, three. Let's look at all the layers. This one I didn't like, so I'm going to delete that. Um, Hey, Rachel. Hi. I'm still working, okay? Okay. Love you. What? Um, is it something? I'm, I'm doing the live stream right now. Okay. So, yes, yeah, somebody's saying, please make the ebook for the female. This is the ebook for the female. So, this is what I'm working on right now as we speak. Um, the radius of the forearm between the crossed bones. The radius of the forearm between the crossed bones. Um, the baby's crying. Yeah, yeah. My son's in the background. He sounds like he's having a having a hard time. Probably needs his nap. Uh, okay. So, I think. What are we at? So yeah, we've been going for about an hour. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. And um, again, if you're interested, you can find the links in uh, the description for those. Um, for the ebook that's already out on the male figure, and then this ebook will be coming out soon. A lot of people have shown interest, so I hope you'll get that once it comes out. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.